The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 2nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early, please, and send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you've got most of, or all USNCs trading to the downside. You've got the Dow off 277, eight tenths percent, one and a quarter for the S&P, or 57 points, nearly 2% for the NASDAQ 100, 306 points there, one and seven tenths for the Russell, or 35 points, 3% for the semis, 117, yeah, about eight tenths percent for the trainees, they're down 126. Gold's off five bucks, with silver being down nearly 2%, or 46 pennies. Lights we crude trading out at 79.48, that's down two and three tenths percent off a of buck 92 natural gas off nine cents may generate an a to b equal cd to the downside today and the 30-year treasury falling apart down one point and four ticks she's printed out at 121 26 now leading the charge dollar wise the upside you've got erie indemnity up 37 bucks 16 percent humanis up 25 bucks five percent powell industries 39 percent or 24 bucks aurora acquisition corp 22 bucks 73 percent aspen technology 11 percent that's a 20 dollar move to the downside it's paycom software leading the charge off 69 dollars nearly 19 percent solar edge 43 bucks and 18 percent mercado libre 41 bucks three and a half percent generac holdings down 33 bucks or 21 percent hubspot off 30 bucks that is a five percent move to the downside so, of course, I want to look at what you want to look at, and I will field all questions. But what we're going to start today, like we did yesterday, let's go take a look at that U.S. dollar index, because the U.S. dollar index at this stage of the game is negating its TD9 count top that formed yesterday. We took a look at the U.S. dollar index yesterday. Well, in, so if you look at the bottom right-hand panel, you'll see that bar number, it's labeled bar number one. That was a bar following bar number nine. So any close above that high, that high, by the way, is 102.22. A close above that high today negates that signal and suggests that we run up towards the 102.62 level. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern. It's fulfilled the one-to-one -one price objective. So a bearish reversal candle would then generate a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. Short of that, price should continue to move higher. Again, with the 103.62 being a likely target. Now, when we took a look at this yesterday, you can see I've got each of the uh, six currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index and their weighting that is inside there. And we took a look at the uh, euro. We know that the euro also formed a TD9 count bottom pattern um, yesterday, completed that pattern. And it closed below, it's bar number eight, not yesterday's low, closed below 1.0943 is going to negate that signal. You can see the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. 
The price target area uh, for the euro on a pullback is 106.96. Unless there's a bullish reversal candle that forms, that would then generate a Gartley buy pattern. In the case of the Japanese yen, it's an A to B equals C to the upside. That should continue to weaken. That'll put strength in the U.S. dollar. That wants to go target the 114.73 level. The Great British pound is weakening. It has an A to B equals C D to the downside. Uh, it has already gotten back to or towards its TD9 count breakout level at 1.2674. That's the real key level to watch out there. The price closes below that. We're headed lower. It'll extend the A to B equals CD pattern. And then the next breakout area for the Great British Pound would be down at about 1.2437 out there. So we'll just really focus in on those three contracts as well as the U.S. dollar index. Everything here is suggesting that the U.S. dollar index wants to continue to move higher. So now let's go from here. And I just need to close this out. And I need to, oh, I know, you know what we can do while I'm doing this here. Shoot, didn't mean to do that. I really didn't mean to do that. Disconnect that. Um, you can't, luckily, you can't see what I'm doing. You can't see the mistakes that I'm making. Um, but I am making them. But what we're, I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the black background screen. We'll stick with the U.S. dollar index. We'll go to its longer term charts out here. So if you give me just a moment, we're going to switch back. You're going to see a black screen momentarily. Oh, you got it. Okay. So there, great. So we've got that up. Let me get this other thing here going too. Sorry, multitasking and really doing kind of a you know, horrible, horrible job at it. But now let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. So here's the daily time frame. We don't really need to go into that. A chart's got the A to B equals CD. Now, there's an area of resistance that the U.S. dollar index is running into. It's on the weekly chart, and it's the weekly bearish structured profile. So the sell zone here is between 102.54 and 103.49. So as good as the U.S. dollar index looks, and by the way, it will continue to look good regardless of what we look at here. It's really important to pay attention to what's going on in the euro pound and the, and the, uh, the Great British pound and the yen out there. That'll have more of an influence, quite frankly, than these market profiles. But just so you know, the U.S. dollar index is trading into a resistance zone, again, between 102.54 and 103.49. And at 103.62, it's another level of resistance. That would be the monthly center of its bullish structured profile out there. So that's all we need to cover with regard to the U.S. dollar index, again, up towards a resistance zone. But the other currencies that affect, affect this look like they want to continue to weaken while the U.S. dollar index would, in fact, then strengthen out there. Now, let's take a look at what else we have going on. Let's take let's stay with this set of charts here. Let's take a look at the U.S. equity future contracts here inside the ES mini upper left hand side. We're going to go do a deep dive into these charts here. But in the ES mini, just to give you an overview, yesterday generated rose momentum indicator top in order to change, get a change in trend signal. You need to see a close below 4507. That's its level of support. In the case of the NQ out, uh, right now. The NQ is testing a prior swing low. That swing low formed out here on the trading day of July the 24th, and that's at the 15,483 level. If price closed below that, then I would say the NQ is signaling something more ominous out there. With regard to the Dow, the Dow has a sell the D point pattern that formed out here on the trading session of July 27th, just a consolidation with inside its profile out here. Uh, support would be 35,267. And the Russell 2000, it does not have a topping pattern. It just simply has a, it just has price consolidating with inside its uh, profile levels with support being 1942.28. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take our first question coming in from John inside the Tiger's Den. He'd like to take a look at the uh, spot volatility index out here. I mentioned that uh, during the uh, uh, during the last segment, uh, that if we have a one-day rate of change that is greater than uh, plus 10% to anticipate some type of bounce or bottom in the uh, overnight or early morning session out here. So the chart that I have up on my screen right now, the top portion is the S&P 500. The center portion is the uh, spot volatility index. That red line is the 50-day exponential moving average, currently printed out at 1471. When you close above a 50-day exponential moving average, what that does, that gives sellers um, the upper hand here. So watch for today's close. Now, the blue, the blue arrows that you see on the top panel of my chart, those represent days where the spot volatility had a one-day rate of change greater than 10%. The green arrows are just the opposite, where the rate of change was below minus 10%. Those typically lead are an initiation to higher price, those, those signals. We'll get a one-day rate of change greater than 10% out there. We typically see some type of bounce or bottom in the overnight session. Doesn't necessarily mean that it holds throughout the entire day, but that's what you would want to be anticipating and looking for. So that's the signal. What you would do or what you would be looking for, That's the, here's the if. We don't know how this is gonna close. It's only 1119. So a lot of time is left in the trading session. But what I can do is show you what to be looking for should that unfold. So let's switch over and we'll take a look at the ES mini charts out here. This is the chart that you really, or the set of charts that you really focused on. And what you're looking for are bottom signals. Now. Forget about that. We're just let's go see what the signals are telling us right now as of 1120 in the morning. And let's start from the lower right. Let's start from the five hour time frame chart and then kind of work our way uh, down, so to speak, until we get back to the daily. So on a five hour time frame chart, I'm going to just simply go ahead and expand this out. We can see that you are in bar number eight of a TD nine count as price has made its way back to its breakout level 45, 45, 25. Now, bar number eight is not going to complete until 2 p.m. So the earliest that we could get a TD9 count 
potential bottom would be between two and the uh, close today out there because bar number eight can be the low of the pattern. There's also an A to B equal CD to the downside that is forming. If we take a look at uh, that right now, we'll draw the A to B line out here or approximately. Let me just exp expand that just a tad more. Sorry about that. And then from here, I'm just simply going to move this over to the uh, to its C point. So you can see we're really at the one to one A to B equals CD for the five hour time frame chart with bar number eight of a TD nine count. Now, is that important? It's probably important when we go take a look at market breath. I forgot to do that. We'll do that. I don't want to do it on this screen because for some reason it gives it conniptions. Now, in a four-hour time frame chart, you are going to get a completed, though you're going to get a confirmed TD nine count bottom at 2 p.m. here. This will complete its TD nine count bottom at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon. So that's kind of suggested. So this is preparing for some type of bottom uh, signal out here. We'll see if that, in fact, happens. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, the two-hour time frame chart, probably the best of the charts to be paying attention to now. And why is that, Steve-O? The reason is because we are now in the bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. So this candle is going to complete in another uh, 40 minutes, 39 minutes to be exact out there. And that low, whatever that low is, is going to be a key level for you to watch. Now, you got to watch that for a two-hour time period because we are on a two-hour time frame chart out here. But on the two-hour chart, you've got a, you will have a confirmed TD9 count bottom as we get to that 12 noon time frame. What should take place from here? Ordinarily, I would tell you that price will go ahead and bounce up towards its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 45.75. I will still tell you that that is the likely outcome. Uh, when you do it, when you get a completed pattern, that price is going to go make a B line for that level of support or resistance, depending on which way it's trading out here. In this case here, it would be resistance that it would be targeting. That's that oscillator and change line. That's on the two-hour chart. The 60-minute time frame chart negated a buy the D point pattern when price closed below this hammer candle, this would need a bullish reversal candle to form another buy the D point pattern or a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. In the case of a 30 minute time frame chart, we can see Rhodes momentum indicator signals have been triggered, but what it's needed, what is needed now is a bullish reversal candle. Ideally, what you would see is you would see those bottoming patterns form on the shorter term time frames, like a 30 minute chart, and you would see it consistent amongst all 30 minute charts out there. Those are the ones that form or generate the best, uh, uh, what we'll call the spot volatility X bounce or bottom signals out there with those one day rates of change above plus 10%. So we'll put up the other 30 minute chart so we can take a look at each of these right now, at least as of 1123 and what they're signaling to and I. We can see that in each case, they have triggered Rose momentum indicator signals. That it's in itself does not tell you that you formed a bottom. What tells you that you formed a bottom is the cavalry that arrives uh, that uh, generates that bullish reversal candle. So that's what you want to look out for. Now, in the case, the interesting thing here in the Russell, the Russell formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did it at 5 o'clock this morning. It is still intact out here. The only thing that would uh, negate that it would be a close below 1968.90. Hmm, something to think about. With regard to the other, nope, with regard to the other, let me just make sure here that low. 35, 465, this closed, 35, 463. So it's only the Russell that still maintains its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It doesn't really need another bullish reversal candle in order to generate that uh, signal. Now, we've got, uh, we're at 1124, we've got six minutes left in this session here. The Dow right now generating what could be a piercing candle that would confirm its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That would then take price up to the resistance zone, which we call 35,546. So we'll come back to this set of charts here uh, as we get, you know, probably after that 1130 uh, break out there. But, John, that's kind of an analysis of the spot volatility index. And with regard to uh, what to be looking for in order to play a bouncer bottom, let's just assume that this was now um, 630 tonight. We're going into the 630 session. And these were the charts that we're looking at. And each of them formed a bullish reversal candle in that first half hour session between 6 and 630. That would then give you a signal that you at least have a bounce that is underway out there.
And that's how I would be taking a look at it. If we don't get that spot volatility, that in fact uh, does a one day rate of change greater than 10%, then that pattern itself is off the table, but not the roads meant to indicator signals that could also be forming on a 30 minute time frame. So from here, what we will do is we'll just simply go to the more shorter term charts. So I'll put up what kind of what I would call the day trading charts because we're down to 10 or 15 minute uh, charts out here. So this is still the ES mini. We're just going to go see what's going on and do a little bit deeper dive with regard to what's going on in a 10 minute chart out here. The 10 minute chart, not much. It negated a TD nine count bottom. So that doesn't look really good out there. And on a 15 minute base, as soon as this populates, this two negated a TD nine count bottom. So nothing good going there. The last thing to take a look at is to try to understand where are we at with regard to market breadth. So to do that, I'm going to change windows. I'm going to come back to one of my main screens out here. And what we will do is we will put up the market breadth data. And here we take a look at the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 shows us that we have the same number of instruments trading above and below profile. I'll open that up. 133 above, 133 below. So the ES Mini, while you've got the four hour, the five hour with TD9 count, well, at least the four hour with the TD9 count bottom, the two hour definitely confirming the TD9 count bottom. And we are at, we're at Kissing Cousins market breath out there. It's not negative, it's not bearish. Looks to me like we're going to get a bit of a bounce out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's down 230. S&P's up 54. Uh, NASDAQ 308. NASDAQ 100, that is. Three own points for the Russell. The semis are down 128. And we're going to go to our first question out here. This is from David H. David wants to take a look at Netflix out here. David writes in and says, hey, Steve, give me your perspective on Netflix. I've got the 445 calls. They expire in the middle of August, David, in Panama City. You know, what you've got here in Netflix is you do have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. We have a new profile that formed yesterday. So the levels to be watching, your resistance, for first, your resistance is the green oscillator and change line. That's at 443.63. The top of the profile, 441.18. The bottom of the profile, which is your support level, is 419.20 out there. So that's what, so it's, uh, you've got the 445 calls out here, but not till mid-August. So what you, you know, we don't have any kind of daily bottoming signal. No bottoming pattern out here. And you just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. On a weekly time frame, what you have is a TD9 count and Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Now, here's your key level of support. So the first key level of support is going to be its weekly oscillator and change line. And that's going to be at 427. Your next level of support is 426.53. That's the day. That's one of the daily profile levels. That's the center. And the bottom is at 419. And then below 419 would be 405.63. So I want to give you our support levels. Resistance we've covered, 441.18, 443 and change, uh, 455.24. As we look at a monthly time frame chart for Netflix, I see an A to B equals CD pattern. Was the B point taken out with volume? The B point is this one labeled bar number seven or letter B. The volume there, 123 million shares. When that was passed, it was passed with 145 million shares. So on a larger term time frame, David, uh, what you've got inside of Netflix is a confirmed week monthly A to B equals CD to the upside. That should take us to, I'm just going to try to grab this, okay, try one more time, the old Stevie grab technique. That's not working. Why is that not working? Wow. Okay. Um, it just doesn't want to participate. There we go. No, that didn't work either. Oh, Lord. So I might just have to go to my other screen. I don't know why Stevie's fat fingers nope, aren't going to do it. So I'm going to switch over to my other screen so that I can give you the A to B equals CD pattern here in Netflix. So before I do move over, I just want to take a quick peek at the 30-minute time frame chart with you, David. On the 30-minute chart, what we have is a Rhodes momentum indicator top, price below profile. At a minimum, we should see Netflix target 425.26 out there. 425.26, that's its TD9 count breakout level. Now, to the bigger picture, we're going to switch charts here. We're going to go to the black background chart screen. Oh, you're on, we're on the black background chart screen. Jeez Louise, Stevie. Okay, I'll go back to the white one for you momentarily. But as long as we're here, let me get over to the Netflix area, NFLX. Sorry about that. Nothing like... Uh, Nothing like making that mistake out there. Boy, if there's one thing that drives me nuts in this uh, this um, this Discord software, it's you just don't know which panel you're on. In any event out here, if we take a look at the A to B equals CD, your one-to-one -one price projection has a price target of 50205, the one-to-one point two seven two, five sixty-one, even Steven out there. Now let's simply go back and take a look at those white background charts so you can get a take uh, so you can get a feel for what we were looking at there, or at least what Stevie was regurgitating for you. Again, you can see the roads momentum indicator top on the daily time frame. You can sort of see the new profile with the oscillator and change line. I'm hoping, David, you wrote those numbers down in your pad of paper out there. You can see the TD9 count and roads momentum indicator top on the weekly. And we just covered the A to B equals CD to the upside for the monthly time frame. So you've got to pull back. Um, I'd watch for some type of bottom pattern on a daily time frame. I don't know what that is just yet. Um, and uh, best of luck to you on that uh, trade out there. Uh, let's go to our next request. This comes in from the Tiger's Den from McGuppy. And McGuppy wants to take a look at the uh, semiconductors. And the questions are, where's critical support? Where's critical support, and is this a buying opportunity? McGuppy was taking a look at uh, the SMHs, I believe, holding the 21-day uh, SMA, the simple moving average out there, which apparently I'm not going to put that on my screen, uh, uh, but uh, uh, but you can, not you, 
Guppy, Guppy's already done that, but others can't to see how that 21 day period as single uh, as simple moving average has held price. But my assistance to McGuppy is helping him to identify other key levels of support. In this case here, you'll see on a daily time frame that what's going to generate today is another Rose momentum indicator top. The SMH has already had one. They generated the first Rose momentum indicator top right back here in the trading day of July 19. That remained in effect. Now price is trading below its bullish, its bearish structured daily profile. And I would say McGuppy, a close today below 157.38 would signal to you its intent to want to get back to its previous lows or the 151.69 level. That is the next critical support level on a daily time frame. The critical support level on a weekly time frame, we would say would be between, I have to give you a, a, the range. The real critical support on the weekly time frame for the SMH is 148.47. Period. End of story. Why did Stevie come up with that? Stevie came up with that because if we take a look at the weekly chart, we see that price has closed above the top of its weekly profile for well more than two consecutive sessions. In fact, it's been a month. When you do that, counter trend moves. If the move lower would only be a counter trend move, price would find support at 148.47. There's other support that the weekly chart has. The first level, 153.43 or thereabouts, that's that weekly oscillator and change line. The second level would be the top of the profile, 152.20. And on a monthly time frame basis, we just simply have price getting back to a prior roadsman to indicator top. That was a top that formed over a three month period of time. That was November, December, and January. January of 2022 was November, December of 2020, um, 2021 out there. So price has gotten back to that level. It's tested. It's rejected it at this stage here. So we've got a good old fashioned pullback. So it looks like the uh, SMHs want to continue to move lower with that 152 to 153 being the next target to the downside. So McGuppy, I hope that that helps you out. On my charts, I don't see it as a buying opportunity. On the intraday chart, just the 30 minute that is, the 30 minute chart has a Rosemont indicator top. Uh, and it looks like price wants to target its breakout level. That's at 153.46. So the 30 minute gives us the 153 number. The weekly gives us the 153 number. And the uh, daily gives us the 152 number out there. So, McGuppy, I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks much for the request. Um, any info on the NYSE advanced decline oscillator beyond BIX that you already covered? Well, Peter wants to take a look at that advanced decline oscillator. Let's go pull back. Let's go do that. Let's switch panels here. I'm going to make sure that I do that. So now we're on the black background charts. If we take a look at the NYSE, what we had out here, was we had kind of a divergence. We had price moving higher, but making lower tops in the advanced client oscillator. Now what we have is price closing below its zero threshold level. Peter, this would be day number one below that area. You need two consecutive bars below that to really confirm that sellers are the ones that are in control. Price is heading towards its oversold area. In order to do that, it gets needs to get to the minus 150 level out there. So right now at this stage here, is there anything more that the, uh, that the uh, advanced client oscillator is communicating to us there really isn't it's not in the bullish condition but remember we need two consecutive closes below that zero threshold line in order to then confirm that in fact the market has shifted into the seller's hands steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, folks. Now, let's get to our next couple of questions. First one coming in from InnoVisual inside the Tigers. I wanted to take a look at the NQ charts out here. So we take a look at the NQ. The first thing to pay attention to is this little swing point out here from July 24th. That low is an important low, 15,483.75. We're trading, uh, if we close below that, likely signals to you and I lower price. And the NQ on a five-hour time frame, it's going to go ahead and form bar number eight of a TD9 count at 2 p.m. We could get a completed TD9 count pattern at day's end. We're likely going to get that same pattern configuration here on the four-hour chart. It's going to complete bar number nine at 2 p.m. That says by the end of the day. Day, watch the bottom. Whatever the low of the day is, that's going to be important for this uh, four-hour time frame chart. The two-hour time frame chart, again, this is looking much like the ES Mini that we covered in detail. It's going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count pattern at uh, 12 noon, and it will complete that pattern at 2 p.m. So I say the 120-minute charts, are, again, they're the ones that are most important to look at. Figure out what the lowest low is by at 2 p.m. Not, not, not the low at 2 p.m., but the lowest low of the day that occurred through 2 p.m. today. Mark that low on the NQ, on the ES, on the YM, on the uh, on the uh, Russell 2000. Well, uh, let's go. We'll go take a look at those charts. I'll put up the under 20 minute charts for all four. Make sure that they all four have that same signal out here. On the intraday, the other intraday charts, a 60 minute. I've got nothing here from a bottom needs a bullish reversal candle. Same on the 30. <clears throat> And we're not going to stay. We're going to stay away from the 10 and 15 minute charts right now. Perhaps just as important, uh, you know, than taking a look at this is perhaps the following. And let me just get to this set of charts here. Give me a moment. We'll put this up on our screen. Now, this is going to be the cash indices out here. This shows us the weekly, the daily, and the monthly charts. So the S&P 500 example, I go from daily and upper left to the weekly to the monthly. Then I pick up on the Russell 2000 daily, weekly, and monthly. NDX goes across. Uh, like a uh, like a row out here and just the Russell that would be a column what we're really focusing on the daily time frame what you should notice is that today is going to become or appears it'll become day number two of consecutive moves lower out here for the S&P 500 does that mean that um, uh, that uh, that we're going to bounce your bottom no 
But it does say that between today and tomorrow, we should experience your knee-jerk reaction low, and we should bounce. In the case of the Yeas Mini, it is not even close to taking out its bullish structured profile support level. Now, two two bar moves to the downside, and then a uh, rally for another couple of days, or the rally continues itself. Certainly, that can form. But we're only at bar number two, so we don't have anything yet to suggest that. Um, I mean, we do have some topping signals, but we don't have anything yet that suggests any kind of sustained sign inside the NDX 100 or just below that, the same thing. Today will be bar number two. The Dow, this will become bar number one of a uh, move lower, and the Russell 2000 will become bar number two. So with regard to consecutive moves lower out there, uh, you'd say the Dow likely gets its second day tomorrow. We probably get the third day and the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, and then we get a, a bounce or something from there. Of course, we want to pay attention to that one day rate of change in that spot volatility index out there because that could certainly change things up, at least intraday wise. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that I shared that with you as well, you know, so hopefully I provided you with the information that you were looking for uh, there. If not, uh, just write back to me and I will um, I'll uh, get that information. Let's go on to our next request out here. That next request coming in from an emailer. It's uh, from uh, George M. George says, I don't know if you already talked about gold uh, looking for a low today. So let's go take a look at Goldilocks. Take a look at this multi time frame set of charts out here. Get a feel for, and remind me, we want to go ahead and punch up those 120 minute charts, see if all of four equity future contracts are showing the same thing. Now, with regard to uh, gold on a, a daily time frame, you are trading below the bottom of its daily profile. This will be day number two below the bottom of its profile. So, what really could be going on here, George, is price may be targeting its breakout level. The area where gold broke out from is 1954.30 for its daily time frame. So that's something to be paying attention to. As we look for any kind of other signals out here, on a weekly basis, gold is just simply consolidating with inside its profile. On a monthly basis, price is pulling back and testing support, its green oscillator and change line. On a 30-minute basis, we need a spike lower between now, between now and let's say this is eight. Uh, between now and one o'clock. If we get that, we could see a TD9 count bottom on a 30 minute time frame chart. I don't want to make that call. The bottom pattern on a 60 minute time frame chart here, George, that you would be looking for, if you believe that there's a bottom, you want to see a, a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We have no bottoming signal on the two hour time frame chart. In fact, it negated a TD9 count bottom. So nothing is going to help us there or the 240 or the uh, five hour time frame chart. Now, I do see a three potential three drive to a bottom pattern, but that requires bullish reversal candles to confirm that pattern out there. So we're just simply going to step away from that. So with regard to gold, the question about gold, I would be watching a 30 minute time frame chart for a signal of a potential at least short term bottom, maybe more than that, George. Um, uh, and I would be watching for that to come back to that at around one o'clock, see if this in fact did form a TD9 count bottom. If it did and that bottom fails, then that tells us we're headed back to 1954.30 uh, out here. With regard to consecutive days lower, maybe this is the reason that George is looking for a bottom. Today will become day number two in that uh, pullback. So here's the daily time frame chart for our Goldilocks. The last time we moved lower, which was uh, back on July 24th, we had a three-bar move to the downside. Typically, you see two to three-bar moves to the downside for Goldilocks. So that low you're looking for may not really be coming until tomorrow. So, George, I hope that that helped you out with regard to at least my analysis of uh, Goldilocks. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, no other questions that I see here. Nothing else inside not inside the Tiger's Den. That was great. If you could do more requests, I can. Could you look at the GDX, please? I believe you were long-term bullish but expected a pullback short-term. Do you see the recent low, 2876, as being the likely buy point? Okay, so let's uh, pull up the charts here for the GDX. Give me a moment. We'll, we'll look at it a couple different ways. And the reason we're going to take a look at a couple different ways is there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that is underway. And that's really the pattern that is now in place to the downside, McGuppy, that we want to focus in on. But I just so we'll go ahead and pull up these charts here with regard to the GDX. And, uh, and the other thing we'll be able to do is we can see the GDX is trading into its uh, swing point low from back on June 29th. Now, if that low gets taken out, McGuppy, then um, my uh, thoughts of this being a significant bottom, uh, I'm showing the AD. Sorry, thank you. No, I'm not. Shouldn't be. Should be showing the white background charts out there. 
uh, Peter. But thanks, uh, thanks for being my wingman there. Um, if it's uh, if it's not uh, showing if showing the black background charts, there's some something else going on. But with regard to the GDX, and hopefully you're seeing the white background charts out here. Um, I, I'll switch over to the uh, to the uh, to the black background charts momentarily when we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. But really, what you're looking for here, McGuppy, is a bullish reversal candle. You've got that nice TD nine count bottom on the uh, weekly. That's why I say if you take out the lows of this pattern here, which would mean a close below 28.76, and Stevie was just simply wrong. Wrong, dead wrong out there. Now let's switch over to those black background charts. We'll take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. It's one and beyond the one-to-one -one price projection levels. So give me a moment here. We'll get over to where we would have those charts. GDX and GDX uh, right now is, uh, let's see, come on, come on, come on, work. There we go. So it's already beyond the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. The swing point is straight into as 17 million. You're at 10 million shares. Price is moving into that swing point, McGuppy, with too much volume. Looks to me like that low is what's going to get tested. That low is 28.76. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Before we go to TJX, uh, let me do this here while I'm at least thinking about it, so I won't, re won't forget. I'm going to put up the 120-minute time frame charts for all four of the equity future contracts. We just want to see if they're all giving us the same signal. For example, the ES, as we uh, get into the 2 p.m. Uh, time frame, is going to complete a uh, – the noon time frame. Okay, in, in six minutes, it's going to complete a TD nine count bottom pattern. Uh, the NQ is going to confirm a TD nine count bottom pattern. It pattern will not complete till 2 p.m. 
and the other two are not participating. So we only have two of those signals, the ES and the NQ. I still pay attention to uh, those. The last question coming in from uh, Bob in Spokane. He wants to take a look at uh, TJX. So give me a moment here, Bob. We'll switch back over to those charts. And as I recall, TJX has a sell the D point pattern for its daily time frame. So I don't have the A to B equals CD pattern drawn in here, um, but it did achieve the 1 to 1.272 and above that level. And uh, it confirmed that sell the D point pattern right here on July 27th when it generated that bearish engulfing candle. Now what we have out here is prices still above the top of its daily profile. The top of the daily profile, Bob, is at 86.46. We're at 86.49. Actually, we're at 86.34. I say I've got a little bit of a data feed issue here. But if price does, in fact, close back inside that daily profile, that would be a close below 86.40. 86.40. Then what that would be signaling to you and I that we're likely going to go test those other profile levels, 85.79, 85.17. The weekly chart will go ahead or appears that it will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top uh, on Friday. And it can still form the bar following bar number nine the next week. So is the top in or not? It will at least have a TD9 count top to suggest that a top is forthcoming. Now, that should then take price back to its oscillator and change on. That's currently printed at 84.93. The monthly chart for TJX is bullish, period. Uh, and the only thing that would change that would be a bearish reversal candle for it. Otherwise, it says price wants to move higher. So the daily and weekly right now are in a bit of a timeout. Of course, the uh, daily, if you get a close above its high, that high being 87.63, then it's back off to the races out there. But it looks like you're going to get a bit of a pullback. And the question is, does the 84.92 to 85.17 level hold this support? Only time will tell. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you back here on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday and be safe out there.